Hey you, my name is Thomas Tom Scott Ridgewell and welcome back to Thanks Day, the series where I try to shine at least a little spotlight on the people that you may not know were involved in the things that I have done. This video in particular is going to be focusing on illustrators or artists in the traditional sense, specifically people that I have hired, I have commissioned, I have paid to draw things for me or for projects that I have been involved in. This is going to be a chonky video though, so I've broken it into nine little subsections. Let's get into it. First of all, we have Astaf Movie, the series predominantly known for being animated. And while yes, we could argue that an animation is technically just 24 or so illustrations a second played in rapid succession, we're going to focus on the drawn parts. I oh, you may not know that Astaf Movie originated as a series of emoticons that I drew back in the mid noughties which I then developed into a comic series for which I did about 30 strips or so before getting bored and letting other people handle the drawing because I'm not very good at it. I did draw a tree though. It's a good tree! You may have noticed that the Astaf Movie series has featured a small handful of traditional illustrations including this beautiful horse illustrated by my old school friend Marianne McLaughlin and this chair and pony by my good friend Chloe Dungate. That's a good looking chair. Bringing it back to the comics though, at one point in history I took the 30 or so comics that I had illustrated along with a large amount of the jokes in the series and brought on my friend friend Matt Lay to make an actual book of the series, taking it back to its original roots. He also did a poster, and it's lovely. Hooray! The book didn't sell very well, but I don't care, because now I have something to beat people with. Speaking of Matt Lay, I also have him to thank for drawing a lot of the t-shirts that we sell of Asta Movie, along with its official very snazzy poster. He's not the only person to work on the t-shirts though, we have Asta Movie's very own animator, Ben Smallman, who's made quite a fair few of them. We also had designs by Ed Gould, Drew Wise, and Cal Moray. Ben Smallman has illustrated a bunch of stickers for Asta Movie, including a whole line of stickers that you could get on your iPhone which, again, no one bought, but they were cool. <laughs> and we also have the Astaf Movie characters reimagined in an anime style which was worked into Astaf Movie 12. These were by Cavill, Cooley Sushi Collins, and Lauren Skittles Trash Meder Meder Mederios. I'm sorry, a lot of these names, they're the first time I've ever said them out loud, and I'm probably butchering them. Please forgive me. Astaf Movie is, of course, not the only series I have under my belt. There's also Crash Doom, which has incorporated a lot of artists, such as background artists John T. Picking, Matt Lay, Katie Nitt, David Roy, and Kyle Labriola. The series has featured title cards from Hugo Junstrand, or Junstrand, Sophie Fletcher, Haley West Nova, and Amelia Tyndall. We've had a handful of Crash Doom comics illustrated by lead animator Ben Smallman once again, but also an entire mini-series called Dustbusters illustrated by Sophie Fletcher. Similarly, we've had Crash Doom merch, like this poster illustrated by Sophie Fletcher, and this t-shirt illustrated by Ben Smallman. You're going to be hearing these names a lot, I can guarantee that. But before Crash Doom even got off the ground, we had concept art by its original animator Edgar Nielsen, Jamie Spicer-Lewis, Joshua Palmer, Kim Miller, and Nandy. We of course can't talk about animated series without acknowledging Ed's World, my old stomping grounds, and while I did make some incredibly beautiful comics and illustrations for the show. Uh, we're going to focus on the Edsworld Legacy period, which was the four or so years when I was actually in charge of the show, working with people far more artistically talented than I. We had comics illustrated by Paul Tavorda, Mark Lavallo, David Roy, Riley, Mikhail, Anthony Rees, John Wicks, Cal Weir, Chloe Dungate, and Ben Smallman, as well as a book put together and featuring illustrations by Maddie Vine. The series itself incorporated a lot of very cool background artists, Dante Picking, Joss Venti, Anthony Price, Joshua Palmer, Ferocia, Patricia... Zmack? Ishmael Bagara, and Temi Chang. Definitely got one of those wrong. 100% sure about it. I'm sorry. We had shirts illustrated by Paul Tavorda, a commemorative poster for the cast and crew, once again illustrated by Sophie Fletcher. And when the series was all said and done, I had a unique piece made and printed for myself, illustrated by Paul Tavorda and Joss Venti, with additional work from Mark Lovello and Ben Smallman. I like that piece, and it's one of the few things that I have left to remind myself of a series that meant so much to me. Did you know that at one point in time, I directed and funded a video game? It was called Cat Attack, and it had character designs by by Haley Westnova and Kristen Devigne. The pixel art of the game itself was created by Matt Frith. The logo for the game was conceptualized by Ben Smallman and finalized by John T. Picking. And the game had a couple of posters by Haley Westnova again and Matt Lay. And Anthony Price did the official icon for the App Store after the first one was taken down for being too violent. The game is no longer available though because the developer went bankrupt. In 2018, my co-writer Eddie and I wrote a kid's Christmas book that was 
in no way for kids. And it was illustrated and eventually turned into a motion graphics animation by four wonderful people, one Belgian and three Danes, all of whom's last names I will fail to pronounce so miserably that I'm only gonna say their first names. The book was illustrated by Dorina, and the motion graphics animation was put together by Philip, Rike, and Christina. I should stop making books though, cause they don't sell very well. Hey, did you know that Elliot, Eddie, and I made a card game? It's called Muffin Time, and while it's not out in stores yet, that doesn't mean you can't appreciate the wonderful card illustrations by Aston Movie's own animator, Ben Smallman. Also, the box itself was illustrated by Matt Lay, once again, and he's also made a lovely poster, which is just for us. I like having posters of things, okay? Being a YouTuber, I have to pay a lot of attention to branding, be it logos, or channel designs, or merchandise, and unsurprisingly, I have worked with a fair few people to do these things over the course of my career. They are! Back at the start of everything, my friends and I made videos under the handle of Cake Bomb, the logo for which, as well as my channel art, and a bunch of other things was made by our good friend Rosie Ball, who we called Rosie Two because we knew another Rosie. Good friends. When I first started doing conventions and going to places and selling things and meeting people, I would bring a very intentionally over the top roller banner with me to grab attention. It was illustrated by Zach Hadel, and while it was eventually decommissioned, it wouldn't be for a few more years that I would learn that it was incredibly offensive to certain people as it inadvertently featured the Japanese war flag. From the ashes of Cake Bomb though rose my new company and trading name Turbo Punch Limited, the first logo for which was illustrated by John T. Pick and the next by Aubrey Casaza, which again, I'm probably getting wrong. I'm sorry. I used to have a series called Fat Loser, which I of course gave up on, <laughs> much like myself, which had a logo by Anthony Creed Price. While YouTube still allowed them, I had channel designs, one of which being made by Paul Tavorda. I miss those days. You had the freedom to make your channel so ugly. I've had a few shirts and logos that didn't fall into any other category, such as this Tom Scar one by Tommy Cameron, as well as this horse I love it design by Lallimand Rudolph, which I, I'm sorry, I... Why can't everyone just be called Steve? And much like the t-shirts, I've also had some pretty cool unique poster designs by Amelia Tyndall, Matt Lay, Charlie Bell, and Elizabeth Fiakovsky. I commissioned a personal Complete History of Me poster by Noe. Speaking of things that didn't fit into any other category, let's get weird with the random round. My friend Chloe Dungate, she once painted me a lovely portrait for Baby With A Gun 2. She also illustrated a comic for me that was called Zack. I made it back when I was 20 years old and it was very bad. I've got one copy. It's glued shut. There are others out there in the world. If you own one, please burn it. Thank you. Do you remember how Holy Shit Cats 2 had those weird cardboard animations? They were made by Jake Pemberton. He does a lot of those. They're actually really cool. I once made a video for BBC's The One Show that I'm pretty sure got someone fired and it featured illustrated cats by Hayley West Nova. She also did this wonderful poster of me and a fan riding a unicorn together that was a prize for a competition. They definitely received that on time and not multiple years late. This may come as a surprise, but the wonderful paintings in my old video Picture Perfect were not actually made by myself or Chris. They were by Amelia Tyndall. Do you remember that video called How to YouTube? It featured illustrations by Anthony Price. Charlie Bell drew me, Eddie, and Elliot's D&D characters. I'm an elf who cut his ears off. I once made sex ed videos, and I brought in my most appropriate friend, Ben Smallman, to make some animated -y illustrations of people doing the dirty. That was fun to direct. I also made videos on porn and puberty, which had very similar animated -y illustrations by Matt Lay. I once commissioned a hundred shitty paintings of Tom Scar from my friend Justine to sell at conventions. Why did I do this? I don't know. People definitely enjoyed buying them. I made a comic about being depressed, a video about being responsible, and also an essay on why I love Seventeen again, and all of these had illustrations by Sophie Fletcher once again. Look, I work with like the same five people over and over and I'm not ashamed! And also while working on that comic about depression, along with the comic about Crash Zoom, and a bunch of other things, I've had my friend Eddie Bowley drawing along with me and helping me frame things and sketch stuff because he's better at art than me. Which isn't that hard actually, so it's not a huge compliment. Finally, before I let you go, I want to talk a little bit about concept art and unreleased things. The things that never made it into the public eye. Remember that comic I made called Zack that was really bad? No, you don't remember it. Please keep it that way. However, I wanted to reimagine it as set in the Wild West and I brought back Kristen Devigne to illustrate it and its characters in a Wild West style and that was really cool and it's a project I'd love to pick up again one day, but I've got writer's block. 
basically. I wanted to make a live action or animated short film called Power Surge. I had some concept art made by Anthony Price. Once again, never happened, obviously. I had a second game that I wanted to make. It was called Stabby Stabby Run Run Princess and Matt Lay drew all of the principal characters and a bunch of other stuff. Guess what? Uh, it never happened. <laughs> Super Average, an animated series that I have wanted to make for over a decade now and I've just kind of stopped promising anything because gestures vaguely at self. We had a short comic run of the pilot episode by Ed Gould and Katie Red Harding. And to keep the series alive, at least in my own head, over the past few years I've commissioned concept art from Paul Tavorda, Jesse Zhang, Matt Lay, Anthony Price, and Sophie Fletcher. Maybe one day. <laughs> And finally, a series that I'm currently writing with Eddie and trying to get off the ground, which I will not announce anything about, not even its name, because I have learned my lessons, has concept art by B. Mai, Seong Su, and Hannah Juergens. Again, probably got a lot of those names wrong. Probably all of them. But, uh... Haha! <laughs> oh, that was a lot, but that was my video about all, at least I hope all, of the illustrators that I've commissioned over the past, I don't know, 15 or so years. Every single person I mentioned in this video has helped me take a step forward or a giant leap deep into a dream of mine and I want to thank all of them immensely. I quite obviously could not have done any of these projects without them and for them I am incredibly incredibly grateful. Thank you so much. I will try and link everyone I mentioned that I have a link to in the description below and I will see you for the final thanks day whenever I make it all about everyone that I have missed because believe it or not there's a whole lot more. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Tom Scott out.